Yeah. And what you're saying, though, the center point is the key point of doing all of that. That's right. And this passage is the middle of that middle section, right? You go back here, this is the parable speech, right? So it's at the middle of the Gospel of Matthew, and this is the middle of the middle. So they, yeah. these kind of chiastic structures. And the top and the bottom. Parables, parables. Reflect yeah. each other. Yeah, this yeah. is chapter 13, verse 13 to 18. If you want to kind of follow it through. Okay, don't worry about the German and all of that. I'll show you a couple of others that are clearer than this. In English? In English, yes. <laughs> Nein, auf Deutsch. Auf Deutsch, auf Deutsch. <laughs> okay. But this, I'm showing you this because this was my first exposure to this. And with this now, I had a tool. I had an idea. And I was really excited about it because it helped me to understand and answer an important question about the New Testament. I didn't think about the Book of Mormon. Not yet. But a couple days, that was about 10 days after that class, Wednesday morning, August the 16th, uh, I was awakened early in the morning. It was probably, I don't know, 4 o'clock. It was still dark outside. And in the summer, the sun comes up pretty early. So I'm guessing it was about 4. And I never woke up before the alarm went off at 6 o'clock. Missionaries were, we were dead tired. But at that, that day, I woke up and was wide awake. And I was awakened by words. There was something that the, the words were there, the thought was clear. And the words were these. If it is evidence of Hebrew style in the Bible, it must be evidence of Hebrew style in the Book of Mormon. And that was the, well, he just wide awake. I got out of bed. And by the way, that's the miracle of that morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the table over uh, kind of off to the side. Uh, we, we just had one big room. My companions asleep over here. I was here and the table's over here. And we, I, I went over and sat down at the table. Because in our mission, before we went to bed at night, we had to read to each other out of the Book of Mormon in German. And uh, it was a great, great thing to do for missionaries. Uh, but I sat down and said, okay, if it's here, where? And the thought was clear. Well, just start reading where you left off last night. And that happened to be in Mosiah chapter 4, part of King Benjamin's speech. So this is my uh, the copy of the Book of Mormon, and I actually brought the very copy here with me tonight. So this is the... Uh, the book that I opened up to this page right here, which is, well, it's in Mosiah chapter 4. I read a couple pages, read chapter 4, and turned the page here on Mosiah chapter 5. And uh, I start reading down the, the column, and these two words right here just jumped out at me. And you can see, this is the one where it says that this is the name that should never be blotted out, ausgelucht, except it be through Übertretung, transgression. Therefore, take heed, uh, avoid Übertretung, that the name is not blotted out of your heart. Okay? That turns out to be the center of this whole, whole uh, chapter, actually, chapter 5. Uh, at the end of King Benjamin's speech. But here it is in English. I promise you one in English. So. But just look at this. This is where Benjamin's people have said, we want to enter into a covenant. And they, this is where they talk about the mighty change of heart. And Benjamin says, will you take upon yourselves the name of Christ? And they say, all answer, yay, yes. And then he says, and this, you will be born, uh, he will be... Uh, You'll be born if you, and you'll become his sons and daughters if you partake of the, this covenant. 
But, as it will come to pass that whoever will not take upon him the name of Christ. Okay, so this is now the, the kind of counterpoint of the covenant. There are always the blessings of the covenant, but there are also the punishments if you don't keep the covenant. If you do not take upon yourself the name of Christ, what? You will be called by some other name. And therefore, you find yourself where? At the left hand of God. Therefore, he says, I would that you should remember to always retain this name written in your hearts, that ye are not found. That uh, Remember that this is the name I said I would give unto you, that never should be blotted out, except it be through transgression. Therefore, now we're at the turning point, take heed that you do not transgress, that the name be not blotted out of your hearts, and whether you should remember to retain this name always in your hearts, that ye are not found on the left hand of God, but that ye hear and know the voice by which ye shall be called, and also the name by which ye shall call. Me. Beautifully stated. And especially when you think of the function of this warning. This is the warning of the covenant. And it is given with this punctuation at the middle. So that, and realize they don't have punctuation marks, they don't have periods, they don't have paragraphs, but they have structure that helps them to see this is the crucial point of this chapter. And the crucial point of having made the covenant was if you now turn away from that covenant, you will be found at the left hand of God, a place you don't want to be. Well, uh, Benjamin, uh, he knows how to write in beautiful Hebrew style. And uh, this was pretty exciting to me, too, as you might imagine. Wow! And I didn't notice all the little details at first, but, you know, later on, reflecting on this, I wondered, was this just accidental? Yeah. So you start thinking, well, what about the uniqueness of this. What are the chances that left hand of God could appear right in this spot and that spot? How many times does the phrase left hand of God appear any, in the whole Book of Mormon? Well, you probably don't know. Without a computer, you, but you could look. It appears twice. Once right here in chapter 5, verse uh, 10, and once down here in chapter 5, verse 12. So these are unique occurrences, which, of course, increases significantly the likelihood that this is intentional, not just something accidental. Well, there are a lot of other places in King Benjamin's speech where uh, he does wonderful things, and other places in the Book of Mormon, but you begin to get the idea Going through a list of things in one order, and then hitting a turning point, and going through the same list in the opposite order is called a chiasm. 